So our first few um, days at Mazeppa Bay uh, had quite a slow start, unfortunately. To be honest, the fact that we managed to tick over fish yesterday and some of the fish that we catch today is actually it's actually we did very well. Um, the sea again when we woke up was ridiculously big, uh, completely unfishable anywhere. We clear about two o'clock. Um, my mate went to the island just to go scratch around for blacktail and stuff, and um, I actually took a little drive along Shark Point to start day two. All right, sup guys. So it's basically almost been about a day since you've last heard of me. Um, this morning we woke up um, nice and early and the wind was blowing and the sea was huge so we didn't really end up fishing my friends they went to the island just to scratch around a bit and I had to do some work call it a nap Pretty easy on holiday after all so yeah then after my work I came, made a little drive here to Shark Point it actually looks quite nice to be very honest with you um, so I went back, I fetched Cole, tried to flash my friends, they didn't see me. Um, but I packed everything, and I think we're going to eat a little afternoon session and maybe catch a fry. And hopefully get stuck into some fish, finally. This week we are in Mazeppa Bay. Probably South Africa's most iconic shark fishing destination. I, I love, you know, Mazeppa Bay, I, the water is different. Over the next few days, we want to tag you guys along, show you guys how we use some serious tackle technology and get stuck into some epic fish with hopefully many, many people. So, so chuffed, folks. First black devil. Come on, man! Fucking get on! Get on, boy! Come on! Yes, man! Crazy on the rocks here. Welcome to Mazeppa Bay 2019. All right, here at Shark Point, we are going to drop quite far. The wind is strong, so we're going to do nice and easily. Yeah. So you can take the distance. Out, we, we quickly saw that there was quite a big wash um, moving from right to left which made it difficult for us to stay at the top so we headed down to the bottom towards the rocks there and eventually the, the baits were washed to like a certain point and then they just kind of stopped there so once we got all our baits out we tried to manage them as close as we can to get all them like all right without tangling and making a huge mess but eventually they settled down we got a fire going and um, obviously as soon as you just as you get comfortable and um, get a fire going, obviously the bite's gonna come. And um, that's, that's how we think of it. Yo! Holy shit! Shut up, not ready. Oh my day! Let's go, boy! Benny, where's your line out? I'm getting pulled here also, eh? Okay, we're clear. Are you under me or over me, Dan? What's happening, Ronson? Yeah, okay, guys, so Danny just went on about literally three minutes ago. 
I just got picked up also. I literally went to set my rod on it. It's a bit of slack. And when I picked it up, I could feel something actually was picking the bait up. And this thing's now just giving it some time to eat. I've got a very big bait. I've got a whole tuna head out. Um, dropped it. Dropped it on the Splash Pro. And it's about 400 meter drop, 500 meter drop. And yeah, this thing, I'm going to set the hook here on this one now. Jeez! <laughs> yeah. Alright guys, chilling, having a lack of rye and we just heard the reel going tick 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 and it's been doing it the whole bloody time because of the freaking surge and it just kept bloody going and that was Danny and then a few seconds later old Bronze I yeah he went on into it as well. Bronson dropped a big tuna head, Danny dropped a piece of diamond ray and we are in. Finally, finally, we are feeling the zip. I haven't used my tunes yet. So this is how we end up. Can't change the blue and gray. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I feel just like I'm on now. We've been fighting for about 20 minutes and stuff. So yeah, unfortunately, I mean, at this place, especially at night, yeah. It's very risky, so this is definitely going to have to be a team effort. Um, but yeah, fish is not far out. Ruan seems like he's looking after the bra, so I think Uncle Big Doom is going to come and help me. Definitely. So, what Danny was saying, like Danny was saying, it's a team effort, guys. It's not, the sea is alright here at Shark Point if you are going to fish at night. We prepared, we've got like six headlamps, we have a spotlight, um, and we're going to we're taking out lines now. Ruan's going to stay here, look after the rods look after the bry and he's going to bring me the landing bag now i'm going to head away with coal probably and then we'll go land these fishy luckily it doesn't seem too big the problem here is if it's not too big it doesn't make it all the way to the beach so we have to play it as it comes let's see so danny's fish was a little bit bigger than in, um, expected uh, we thought it was going to be a small prey but it ended up being like a prey of about 130 kilos uh, so it took a lot of effort from from me and from Ruan um, oh, oh, oh. um, and that we right, move left towards the valley here Ruan's right where well. that's why you need a 20 meter leader Guys, we finally got it. Nice grey shot, yeah? Rhodes is still bending on the other side. It's not the ideal place to land it. Now we're going to take one or two pictures quickly and then we're going to quick release it. But I mean, obviously, we've got to take a safety in consideration here. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to take the landing bag with us. Um, to help um, land that fish and Ron was have, had the spotlight on him and the landing bag it was just just bad timing because as Danny's fish was close Bronson's fish was close and it was on the complete opposite side of Shark Point so Bronson was left by himself with coal and not enough or not sufficient light including the he didn't have the spotlight so it was just he was trying to time the fish Bronson and unfortunately he couldn't land it when when it should have been landed and instead of while he was waiting for it to try to time it nicely, it got caught on the rocks and it cut him off right in the front. Uh, those things are going to happen. It is unfortunate. Maybe you should have just carried on pulling and try to land it with coal instead of trying to wait. But you can't do everything right. It's a, it's a very quick situation. I think quick, big, quick situation. So, so uh, we unfortunately lost Bronson's fish. There's too much, too many stuff happening at once. Everyone was. One side, Bronson was alone, no light, and stuff up, unlucky, uh, it's gonna happen. Just to show you guys why you shouldn't wrap a leader in your hand. You are an idiot! <laughs> very stupid idea. Grab some gloves, very easy. At least we had Danny's fish out, and once again, we about to settle down, have some chow. They didn't 
drop more baits, but we all, we all agreed just to make one drop before dark. <laughs> Carl was next to go on with uh, a personal best for him, and uh, it was quite an epic work. Thing. Yeah, there we go, Carl landed a lovely black tip, it was 98 kilos according to measurement. Well, it was quite a successful little evening session in the end, we got three fish out. Like I said, to just, just the fact that we ticked over and got some fish was actually very good. So after Carl's fish, we finally got a chance to eat, that went home and started our preparations for the next day. Take a bite, bro.